Hello everyone, we are Group Work and today we are going to discuss the words and plastics in architecture. So let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is April Janis Date from BS Architecture 1E. And so now let's talk about woods in architecture. So why woods are very important in construction. So natural woods has certain properties that makes it an important and attractive building material. So these properties are natural warmth, workability, infinite variety, strength to weight, flexibility, fire protection, and color. So now let's proceed to the classifications of wood. So there are two classifications of wood, the soft wood and the hard wood. So ang soft wood ay galing sa conifers or evergreens na may needles instead of leaves. So example, ay yung pine trees. So ang hard wood naman ay galing sa broad leaves or deciduous trees. So most Philippine timber are of this lucky kind. So the soft wood and hard wood are often misleading because Wala silang direct na relation sa actual na physical hardness at softness ng wood. So, yung hardwood ay pwede pa pala mas softer kaysa sa soft wood. So, now let's proceed to the structure of wood. So, there are two components which are the soft wood and the hardwood. So, let me show you the structure of wood. Yo! So, I'm going to explain to you the structure of the wood the wood, the soft wood, and the hard wood. So, ano nga ba yung pinakaiba ng soft wood at saka hard wood? So, ito yun. So, what's the difference between the soft wood and the hard wood? So, the soft wood is, ito yung softer, younger, at saka lighter part ng tree. So, ito yung mas prone ng blowing fungi at saka wood burning insects, and it is not durable. Then, Sa hardwood naman, ito yung older part and the harder central portion ng tree. So, ito yung mas dense at less permeable and more durable than the surrounding subwood. And those are the structure of wood and so let's proceed to the next one. Now, there are four properties of wood. The hardness, flexibility, strength, and durability. So, hardness is measured through compression. Flexibility is the amount of piece will bend before breaking and strength is the ability to resist applied forces that could lead to its failure and last is the durability which is the natural resistance of wood against biologic degradation. An example of that is the case. So the properties of wood are very important in construction kasi dito natin malalaman kung gaano kadurable ang isang kahoy at para na rin maiwasan natin ang failure sa construction. Now, woods also have defects. So, they are known as decay, tracks, shakes, knots, pitch pockets, wain, and warp. Now, decay is very common to all of us. So, ito yung parang nabubulok na part sa kahoy and it is caused by the attack of a food drive. Now, when it comes to tracks, ito yung crack na palentwise uh, lengthwise separation across the annual rings of growth caused by irregular shrinkage during drying. So, sa shakes naman, uh, very similar to checks kasi nakakrack din ang yung kahoy between and parallel to the annual rings of the growth. Now, the nuts is ito yung irregular growth sa parte sa katawan ng kahoy or ng wood na nag sa smoothness ng grain sa kahoy. So, sa pitch pocket naman, um, ito yung well-defined openings between annual rings na naglalaman ng solid or liquid pitch. Sa so, wing naman, ito yung parte na kung saan yung bark or bark edge na nagiging plank. So, the last defects of the wood is what they call the warping. So, warping is the surface of the wood was caused by an equal shrinkage of the board. So, there are four classifications of warping. So, they are the bow, crook, cup, and twist. So, the bow is the face or yung mukha ng kahoy is pa-convex or pa-concave longitudinal. So, sa crook naman is the edges 
of the board or the wood is convex or concave longitudinal so they are very completely opposite to the bow so the cup is yung mukha ng board or ng kawi is pa convex or pa concave across the board so para siya nang perform ng semi u shape so sa twist naman is the distortion of the board na kung saan yung isang corner ng board is raised. Now, a log can be cut into two different ways to make a lumber. So, they are plain sewing and quarter sewing. So, plain sewing refers to lumber cut, tangent to the annual rings or graph, or in commercial practice, cut with annual rings at an angle 0 degrees to 45 degrees. So, mas preferable ito kung gusto mo ng pleasing pattern or kaaya-ayang pattern, um, ginagamit ito sa wall paneling. So, sa quarter sewing naman, so, the wood cut radially to the annual rings of growth parallel to the rays or cut with the annual growth rings at an angle 45 degrees to 90 degrees. So, it is desirable. So, mas mas better ito kaysa sa plain sewn lumber kasi kasi dito yung joints ng kahoy must be kept tight and this is very important so now let's proceed to the lumber i am at Santisas and let's continue the discussion about woods and architecture so i am going to discuss to you the lumber and Lumber has two classifications. First is the dimension lumber and the second one is the board lumber. It is very important to realize that the stated sizes of the lumber is not its actual finished sizes. And here comes the nominal size. The nominal size explains that the size of a lumber when it is cut from the log. The nominal size of the original size when it's cut from the log. After cutting, the lumber is dried and then planed on all four sides to achieve smoothness. Then the finished sizes is, all, of course, as expected, it is smaller than the nominal size. Then, let us discuss the measurement of the lumber. Lumber is sold in lengths from 6 feet up to 20 feet in increments of 2 Fit. Special lens greater than 20 are also available but cost more per board foot than st standard lens. Lumber measures in board foot which may be described as the measure of a piece of wood 1 inches thick, 12 inches or 1 foot wide and 12 inches and 1 foot long. Board, uh, the formula of that is Board fit is equals to thickness in inches times width in inches times length in feet over 12. And the next one is the seasoning of lumber. Moisture has a big influence on the behavior of properties of the wood. It makes wood liable to the attacks of insects and fungi and unfit for use. The drying of wood continues until the vapor pressed in the air just balances the vapor pressure on the wood surface. This condition of dryness of the wood is also called equilibrium moisture content (EMC), and in the per in the Philippines, this equivalent to from 12 to 16 percent moisture content. The process of remove the process of removing moisture from green wood. Woods from freshly cut logs is called seasoning. Seasoning may be done by first air drying in which the lumber is exposed to air. Then the second one is kiln drying in which warm moisture, air, or superheated steam is used to heat the wood and drive out moisture. So, the ideal condition in seasoning is for the moisture from the interior of the wood to replace the surface. Moisture which vaporizes then when moisture from the surface is gay faster than which travels from the interior of the surface. Then there is an equal drying in the board and if the difference in moisture content is big, shrinkage then stress in the wood develops causing seasoning checks. 
the advantages of kiln drying over air drying so first one is that it has a greater reduction in weight and the second was that control of moisture and content to any desired value then the third one is the redu reduction in drying time then the fourth one is that the killing of any fungi and live insects setting the the fifth one is that setting the right sense in renaceous woods and the last one is that less degrade so now let's discuss the deterioration of lumber first is that it caused it was caused by decay molds stains and decay inputs are caused by fungi then the insects uh, there are several types of insects that attacks wood. The first one is the subterranean termites, which lives in the ground and build earthen tubes to reach their food. The subterranean termites, in general, a complete barrier must be made between the wood and the possible earthen tubes of the termites by also installing shields made of metal or special termite proof materials then the second was the termite proofing the wood user for construction close to earth then the poisoning the soil adjacent to the building to avoid insects then the next one is the non subterranean termites the only relatively permanent method of arresting attack is to use lumber that is given full-length termite proofing with wood preservatives attention to structural features and sanitations are also important then the carpenter ants and powder pest beetles use woods for shelter rather than for food but if they are not found or left undisturbed they can do extensively damage they convert wood to powder shredded fibers or pellets then their channels are likely to cut across the grain the damage the damage wood by various marine organism mollusks and crustaceans in salt water or brackish water is best arrested by heavy third root treatment with coal tar cresotes or cresote Cold bar solutions. Then the preservation of lumber we can be treated and can be prevented or at least delay the destruction by fungi, insects, bacteria, marine organisms, or fire. Then wood preserva preservatives used for forestal attack by the cave, fungi, harmful insects, and marine borers are divided into two general groups. The first one is the oil type preservation. The coal tar cassotes, a black or brownish oil made from distilling coal tar. Advantages are its highly toxicity to wood destroying organism, insoluble in water and easy to apply. Disadvantage are it's very strong it has a very strong and unpleasant odor and it cannot be painted easily. Then, it was easily ignited by fire. The chrysote derived from wood, oil, and water gas has the same advantages as the coal tar chrysote, but is less effective. Then, the pentachlorophenol. Yes, the pentachlorophenol, a mixture of petroleum oils and 5% pentachlorophenol, has highly protection against decay, fungi, and termites, can be painted, and has no unpleasant odor. Then, the second one is that the waterborne wood preservatives. Chromate zinc chloride, CZC, gives protection against decay, insects, and also fire, can be painted, and has no objection, objectionable odor. And then, the disadvantage of this is that the wood cannot be used in contact with the ground or water. Then the chromate copper arsenate or CCA and the ammonia cal copper arsenate or ACA. CCA and ACA are dissolved in water for pressure treating, producing a product that is clean and odorless. So, the preservations of lumber. The methods of applying preservatives are first is the pressure treatment. The pressure treatment means consists in placing the wood in cylinders into which the preservatives in 
is pumped under pressure. Then the second one is that hot cold bath method. This consists first in placing the wood in bath of hot preservative for an hour or more. Then it is then withdrawn and quickly placed in a bath of cold preservatives. Then the third one is the dipping or immersing the wood in a hot preservative for a short time. Then the last one is the brushing. Then, let us go with the treatment of lumber. There are two methods of treating wood to increase the fire resistance. First of all is the covering wood with compound materials. And the second one is that impregnating the wood with chemicals. So, let us discuss what is covering the wood with compound or materials. Well, such superficial coatings or layers protective materials retards the normal increase in temperature under fire conditions and thereby decrease the rate of flame spread. This is turned less in the rate of flame penetration and therefore the destruction of the wood in contact with fire. Then let us discuss the impregnating the wood with a chemical which the wood itself not supports the combustion. The chemical commonly used for impregnating are first is the monobasic ammonium phosphate, and the second one is that the dibasic ammonium phosphate, and the third one is that ammonium phosphate. The fourth is borax boric acid, and the last one is that the zinc chloride. So these are the pressure treated lumbers and plywood. The first one is the mulvanized lumber and plywood. It, uh, it uses a preservative called Wolman salt and the tunnelized lumber and plywood which uses, which uses tunnelized G wood preservative salts and the permanized lumber and plywood which uses PS25 and the last one is the Palin lumber plywood so it is the end of my discussion and I will pass it to my group mate thank you Hello guys, uh, my name is Lauren Francis P. Kabakungan and here we're going to tackle about Philippine wood. Uh, as you can see, uh, these are examples of Philippine wood that is used for construction. Uh, so we'll, here we have kamagong, uh, also known as Philippine ebony. Uh, kamagong is a wood unique to the country with a black heartwood inner region and gray sapwood. This produces really dramatic dark Timber, hence the name. Uh, the grain is often grayish and has strong dark brown streaks. It's good to use on accent pieces, but it might not be good idea to make a whole furniture piece out of it. Uh, so in the pictures below, uh, that is the kamagong. Next, we have the mulave. Mulave is one of the hardest local woods. Mulave has a fine texture that makes it smooth to the touch. It's available in pale yellow to pinkish brownish tone with a lighter sapwood uh, in the outer region and mostly straight grain. It has no distinct odor. As you can see uh, in the pictures below, uh, that is the molave. Also ideally, uh, molave is used for window frames, shipbuilding, structural posts, railroad tracks, and other outdoor applications. And next is the Nara. Nara is a very popular tropical wood and uh, has tones that range from yellow to red. Uh, the grain is often interlocked and wavy which creates interesting flame and ribbon figures when quarter sun or flat sun which is now which makes it a beautiful finishing material. As a in the next page, uh, this is this is the Nara. As you can see, one of the hardest uh, tree in the Philippines, also our national tree. Uh, next is the Tangile, uh, moderately hard reddish wood. Tangile is one of the seven local woods, often referred to as Philippine mahogany. This abundant wood type boasts of fine ribbon or straight grain. It's relatively soft and easy to work on but resilient enough for outdoor construction. Tangile is ideally used for inferior finishes, uh, cabinets, and boat building. Boat building. So, in the pictures below, this is the Tangile. 
and lastly uh, we have Yakal. This resinous wood with yellow to golden red tones is another local mahogany type. A high grade timber, Yakal can be tolerate harsh, hot, and cold weathers. Uh, so, uh, Yakal is used ideally for furniture, uh, surface finishes, and outdoor constructions. So, basically, Yakal is a good for different kinds of climate, which is very good for outdoor constructions. And next, we have the allowable, the allowable working stress that we can apply in the wood. So the allowable stress or allowable strength is the maximum strength, uh, specifically tensile, compressive, or bending, that is allowed to be applied on structural material. The, all the allowable stress are generally defined by building codes, and for steel and aluminum, is a fraction of their yield stress. So in the next slide, uh, we, as you can see, these are the allowable stress of different kinds of uh, Philippine woods that you can apply and next the weights of wood so here uh, in the picture below there are examples of uh, wood species with the weight and characteristics or the physical properties uh, so we have physical properties the main physical properties of wood include color luster texture macro structure odor Moisture, shrinkage, eternal stresses, swelling, cracking, warping, density, sound, electrothermal, conductivity, um, color, shine, texture, and macrostructure macro determine the appearance of wood. So we have timber gloss. Uh, timber gloss is the ability to reflect light beam pointedly. It depends on wood density, size, and location of medullary rays which reflect light rays pointedly thereby creating the shine on the radial aspect. Next is texture. It's a peculiar pattern formed by the medullary rays, fibers, and yearly layers of wood in different contexts. Next, the humidity. is the ratio of moisture mass in a given wood volume to the weight of absolutely dry wood, expresses as percentage. Shrinkage is a reduction of linear measurements and wood volume during drying. Eternal stress are stresses in woods. Uh, round carving wood and sun timber without an application of external forces. Next, we have warping is a change in the form of the cross section during drying or getting wood. Warping could be transverse and longitudinal. Sound conductivity is a material property to conduct sound. It is characterized by the speed of sound spreading in the material. Electrical conductivity is characterized by its resistance to the passage of electrical current. It depends on wood species, temperature, humidity, and the grain of the wood. And lastly, we have the durability. It is the ability of wood to resist degradation, tension, compression, bending, shear, and etc. under the, ex the action of external forces. So that is the physical properties. Hello everyone, my name is Frenchra Bitabaya, reporting from Group 4 about wood composition. Now, what is wood composite? It is a manufacture from a variety of materials, usually containing the same wood used in lumber, but they are combined to make them stronger, so it is mixed to form a new material. It is also known as engineered wood. Most wood composite are made with large sheet measuring 1,220 millimeters by 2,440 millimeters. There are many types of wood composite. Now let's talk about them. So this is the type of wood composite: plywood, hardboard, chipboard, fiberboard, gypsum board, fiber cement board, and particle board. So let's go to the most commonly known, plywood. Plywood. Plywood is the most common wood composite. It is made of several thin plies or veneers of wood that have been glued together. Each 
supply or veneer is glued so that its grain is at right angles to the grain of the previous ply. As you can see at this example, the, the veneers are perpendicular, are perpendicular from each other so that it forms a 90 degrees angle so it will make it strong. So the next one is hardwood. Hardboard is a paneling material made by reducing and refining wood chips into small thread-like fibers and then pressing them under heat and hydraulic pressure into dense, smooth, and very rigid panels. In the production process, the pulp is exploded under pressure. Heat and steam is applied to leave fine, fluffy, brown fiber. These fibers are transformed into mats which are held together with lignum and other glues. The mats are then pressed between steam heated metal plates to give grainless sheets with one smooth, glossy surface and one textured surface. To prevent wrapping, moisture is added to humidification chamber. Another one is chipboard. Chipboard. Chipboard is made by bonding together wood particles with an adhesive under heat and pressure to form a rigid board with relatively smooth surface, often faced with veneer. It is made by binding phenolic resin or urea for maldehyde glue. Chipboard is available in a number of densities. Normal medium and high density normal density is fairly soft and fluffy high density is very solid and hard often used for worktops and fire doors medium density is somewhere in between let's go to gypsum board gypsum boards gypsum boards is a non-combustible building board with a gypsum core enclosed in tough, smoother paper. It is designed to be used without addition of plasters for walls, ceilings for partitions. It is extensively used in drywall construction, where plaster is eliminated. These are the type of gypsum board. Wall board, backing board, core board, Type X gypsum board, water resistance backing gypsum board, gypsum sheeting, gypsum form board. Then fiber cement board. Fiber cement boards. Fiber reinforced cement board is comprised of 72% Portland cement, 20% mineralized cellulose fibers derived from recycled materials and 8% calcium carbonate. This is the fiber cement board. Here's the examples. Fiber board. Fiber boards are finishing materials made from vegetable fibers such as corn or sugarcane stalks pressed into sheets. It is not very strong but has good insulating properties, therefore it is usually used sealing only. MDF stands for Medium Density Fiber Boards. It is a type of fiber board which is made from wood fiber glued under heat and pressure. MDF has many qualities that make it an ideal alternative to plywood or chipboard. It is dense, flat, stiff, has no nuts, and it easily machined. Its fine particles provide a material without recognizable grain. And last but not the least, particle board. Particle board. Particle board is made of small wood chips and base materials, including cotton stock, rice straw, big gas, conventional wood chips 
and sawdust that have been pressed and glued together. Here is the example of particle board. So that's all for wood composite. Hope you learned something. Uh, hello guys, uh, it's me again. Ang uh, taong magisuman sa akong dagway. So here we have millwork. Uh, millwork is any type of woodwork that is produced in a mill. This includes doors, molding, trim, flooring, uh, wall paneling, and crown molding. Millwork is a wooden product that has been produced in a mill. Molding and flooring are often produced in mills and are therefore considered to be millwork. So, as you can see in the pictures below, uh, at the left side we have the milling machine, which is responsible for creating such wooden product, which is the millwork, as you can see at the right side. And next we have molding. Molding uh, in architecture and the decorative parts a defining transitional or terminal element that contours or outlines the edges and surfaces on a projection or cavity such as cornice, architrave, capital arc, base, or jam. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, kayo nandung patahani sa uh, atong history of architecture, atong nag-study pata atong Roman architecture ba to? Eh, different types of pillars. Uh, so next, uh, according to which several basic shapes were standardized in the vocabulary of architectural design as follows. We have the flat or angular, uh, the fascia face or band is a continuous member with a flat surface parallel to the surface that it ornaments with their projecting from or slightly receding into it. Next we have the single curve. The cavetto is a concave molding with a profile approximately a uh, quarter circle, quarter ellipse or similar curve. Next, we have the compound or composite. The same recta, a projecting molding, consists essentially of a cavetto above an avola, forming in profile one continuous double curve, often used as a crowning member, in which case it is sometimes known as simatium. Uh, the next, uh, these are the types of molding. As you can see, we have the astragal, cavetto, sim recta, sim reversa, Fillet, obolo, flush bead, uh, flutes and fillets, reading, scotia, torus, etc. Uh, so that's it for the types of molding, uh, also for the millwork. So, thank you guys. Hi, I'm Jeremy Kate Maharla and I will be discussing about the plastics in architecture. So first, let's define plastic. So what is plastic? Plastic is a general name given to a wide range of synthetic material that based on polymers. Construction industry uses plastic for a wide range of applications because it fits versatility, strength to weight ratio, durability, corrosion, and resistance, and so on. Plastics can be manufactured into forms such as pipes, sheets, panels, and so on. So for example, I will be defining and giving some examples of plastics that is used in construction. One, <laughs> plastic film. So as you can see, plastic film is a thin continuous polymeric materials and it is used in a wide variety of applications. This includes building construction, landscaping, electrical and fabrication, and etc. Also have foam plastic. Foam plastic is a foam plastics are expanded materials with a cellular structure that have various identifications. Names such as plastic foams, structural foams, and microcellular foams. It's used for air filters, thermal insulations, and panels for buildings. Of course, there are also advantages and disadvantages of a plastic. So first, let's tackle about the advantages of plastic. Plastics can be flexible, easily extruded, bent and molded, and so on. And also, there are some plastics that are recycled. Let's talk about the disadvantages of plastics. 
Disadvantages of plastics are it has a high body energy content and low modulus of elasticity, meaning that it is generally unsuitable for load bearing applications. Hi, I'm Fresca Villagas. I am from BS Architecture 1G. And in this video, I'm going to be tackling about plastics. Plastic, by its definition, is any synthetic or natural organic materials that can be extruded, molded, drawn into objects, films, and filaments. Plastic is formed through the process of polymerization. Polymerization is a chemical reaction of co the combination of monomers to form a large molecules containing the same structural units of the original molecules. Mon monomers or monomer is a low weight molecular molecule that can be combined together to form a polymer. Polymer is when you combine two monomers that has the same identical structural units. Copolymer, on the other hand, is when you combine monomers that has different structural units. One, ex one example of a polymer is our DNA because it's a big biological molecule but is consists of, that is consists of small building blocks. And those small building blocks of, the D of a DNA is the monomers. Now an example for copolymer is a PIVA or ethanol vinyl acetate. It is a combination of ethylene and a vinyl acetate. Now since we're done talking about polymerization and stuff, we're going down to plastic component components recent. Plastic component recents are any any numerous substances solid and semi-solid added to form plastics. These are the things they add as they manufacture plastics. First is filler. Filler is a substance added to a product to increase its bulk, weight, viscosity, opacity, and strength. Fillers are added to plastics because fillers changes the, proper, the original properties of plastic. Next is stabilizer. Stabilizer are intentional additives used to prevent environmental effects on the plastics such as heat, UV lights, and other things. They are also added to prevent degradation of the polymer during the, proce the processing and even the time of use. Next is plasticizer. Plasticizers are added to plastic to make the plastic flexible and bendable. Next is catalyst. Catalyst used to accel accelerate chemicals reaction without it undergoing permanent change in composition. Rubber. Value for its elasticity, non-conductional of electricity, and resistant to shock and moisture. Elastom. Is an elastic polymers, natural rubber as butyl and neoprene. It is used for seals, mold flexible parts, and adhesive. Butyl rubber, a synthetic rubber having exceptional resistance to sunlight and unusually low ga gaseous permeability used in roofing membranes and waterproofing barriers. Butyl rubber is used as adhesive, agricultural chemicals, fiber optic compounds, ball bladders, and many more. Neoprene. A synthetic rubber that is superior resistant to oil and sunlight, used in paints, ruffling membranes, flashing, gaskets, and bearings. Silicon rubber. A silicon rubber is made from silicon elastomers, noted for its retention of flexibility, resilience, and tensile strength over a wide temperature range. It is used to bind together important building materials such as concrete, glass, metal, and granite. Now we're going to be talking about types of plastic thermoplastics. Plastic thermoplastics are plastics capable of softening or fusing when heated without change in any inherent properties. Key terms, they're the type of plastics that 
can be molded can be remolded even though they are already been molded first is polyvinyl a white water insulable insulable widely used for floor coverings insulation and piping examples of these plastics are pipes and pvc next the nil tough flexible plastics made from polyvinyl resin Polyvin polyvinyl resin thermoplastic resins formed by polymerizing or copolymerizing a vinyl compound polyvinyl butyrol this is the type of plastics that serves as a safety inter interlayer of a, of a glass used commonly for windshield as an interlayer to a laminated glass polyethylene a tough, light, and flexible thermoplastic used in the form of sheeting and film for packaging, damp proofing as a vapor retarder. Used in variety of, of application includes packaging for consumers' produ products, plastic parts of various industry and including automotive industry. Polystyrene that is easily colored, molded, expensive, or rolled into sheeting thermoplastic polystyrene is a hard solid plastic often used in products such as food packaging and laboratory wear thermosetting plastic a plastic that becomes permanent permanently rigid when heated and cannot be softened again also called thermoset polyurethane a thermoplastic or thermosetting resin used in flexible and rigid foams elastomers and reason for sealants, adhesive, and coatings. Polyurethane is used to coat surfaces, protecting them from scratches and helping to resist water damage. Polyester, any of a group thermosetting reason used in the manufacture of plastic and textile fibers. Fiberglass reinforced plastic, a polyester reinforced with glass fibers and used in translucent roofs and skylights, facings for sandwich panel and molded plumbing fi fixtures. Dacron, a trademark for a brand of strong, wrinkled, resistant polyester fiber. Unlike natural fibers, Dacron is hypoallergic, non-absorbent, and mildew resistant. Mylar, a trademark for a brand of a strong, thin polyester film used in photography, recording tapes, and electrical insulation. My Mylar means stretch in two directions, giving it an exceptional tensile strength. Epoxy resin. Thermosetting resin capable of tight cross-linked polymer used especially in surface coatings and adhesive. Epoxy resin is used in the manufacture of adhesive, plastic, paints, coatings, primers, and sealers. Melamine resin. Thermosetting resin formed by the interaction of melamine and formaldehyde used for molded products, adhesive, and surface coatings. Melamine resin is used to produce high durable coatings. Phenolic resin. Heat-resistant thermosetting res resins formed by the condensation of phenol with forma formaldehyde used for molded products. Bakelite Dark phenolic resin used for telephone receivers, radio cabinets, electric insula insulators, and molded plastic hardware. Urea formal formaldeh formaldehyde resin Thermosetting synthetic resin made by condensing urea with form formaldehyde used in appliance housing, electrical devices, and adhesive and surface coatings.